Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4's podcast of Serenville Stories Invisible. I'm your host Tia, conveniently I also am the voice of Tia so I guess that worked out pretty well for me. Tonight I am joined by some of the cast of episode 4. We're going to be talking all things invisible, thoughts, theories and what transpired in the latest episode. So if you've not watched it yet please go and watch that first. So firstly, we're going to introduce everyone here. So tonight, I am here with the voice of Mr. Bad Boy Jock himself, Detective Magnotta. Hello! We're also here with the voice of Vince's best friend, question mark? The Rich Voices. Hello! We have got the voice of our confused, aspiring dancer, Curry Games. Hi, uh, I'm Kyle. I might be a bully, but uh, I'm, I'm misunderstood, okay? Just... He's misunderstood, so don't judge him, okay? okay. Yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> We've also got the voice of our favourite troubled teacher, Kyle Richardson Nickel. Wagwan. During this episode, we actually dimmed down a lot of the focus that is usually on Hannah, and we gave the floor to some more of the supporting cast. A big theme throughout this episode was developing their feelings for one another, revealing jealousy, love, guilt, resentment, all of which just furthers the depth of these supporting characters and actually makes them feel as though they're main characters in their own right. So, I have got a few questions here that are going to be tailored to specific paired characters. And then after that, we're going to move on to some open questions for everybody. So, we are going to start off with Mag and Rich. What I wanted to do was probably start off with the bombshell that was left near the end of the episode regarding Sean. So this question, like I say, for Rich and Mag, um, near the end we see that Sky and Lucy are at the docks and they're waiting for someone. Someone that Sky seems to be familiar with and has some connection to already. We don't really know the severity of the situation just yet, but we do hear them talk about Vince, for one, and the possibility of getting the police involved. So, sounds pretty serious. It's then revealed that they were actually there all along to meet Sean. What I want to know is, what do you think Sean's motivation could be for double-crossing his best friend, Vince? What do you think his plans are with Sky and Lucy? He kind of wants to be top dog in the group now. He's like, oh, he's had his time now. I want my time. Oh, really? So you think he wants to surpass Vince in, like, mm. all aspects? He's getting more and more <laughs> nastier in every episode that goes by as well. I'm just like, oh, someone needs to take him down a peg, you know? And it really doesn't help that Tia uses all my ad-lib versions. And I'm like, oh, God, I forgot I said that. <laughs> I literally had so many different takes of, the, of those mm. lines. I was like... Oh god, there's two of these. I don't want to send them because they sound like so bad. As I, I, I think that's one of the lines she uses. Like, okay, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, Mag is a sweetheart IRL. He just, he just brings this side out of him for Vince. I think that um, with Sean being the uh, the student body president, he is a big contributor to uh, you know kind of school spirit, community welfare, etc. So with that in mind, Vince and Sean are gonna have this conflict of interest. Here, so Sean is he's gonna have a bit of a difficult path going forward, especially with how close he is to Vince. He is Vince's best friend, so it's. Um, it's not going to be a good time for either of them, so it's a, it's a difficult well, one for sure. The jock group kind of are all kind of pretty douchish, to be honest. Yeah, I think <laughs> Sean may be Real kind bit. of the least likely of the douche. Fuck you, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Where are Cryonator? Vince's redeeming moments? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. They're a bit late. Even I don't know this. <laughs> Um, great, great answers, by the way. Thank you uh, very much for that. It's interesting to see your insight on your characters, so thank you. Well, we are going to move on to our next paired question now. Uh, this one is going to be for Curry and Kyle. Uh, so, Mr. Zimri and Kyle. So, uh, both of your characters are very reminiscent of one another, as they both seem to be on a sort of kind of redemption arc in a sense because you've got mr zimri who's lost his family due to a mistake on his part but he's also trying to do better and trying to have a more stable life and career to get his family back 
And then you've got Kyle, who's very jealous and aggressive towards Dylan, who is openly gay. But because Kyle's still trying to come to terms with who he is and what he really wants to do, he's got that fear of rejection from his friends and, you know, he feels like he's got a certain um, image to uphold. So my question for both of you, and I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Curry first and then Kyle second, if that's okay. Uh, so for my, my question for you both is, how do you feel about the interaction between Mr. Zimri and Kyle? Do you see them possibly bonding more in the future? Kyle seems to be very comfy around Mr. Zimri. Hmm. Like, uh, you know, he tried to get Mr. Zimri out of his mind by getting him, you know, trying to get him to play some ball a little bit. But I can see those two being closer in the future, like being able to just talk about things. You know, actually, uh, I kind of had a theory. Yeah. Uh, that I think Mr. Zimri is going to help Kyle to open up a bit more in the future series. Oh. Okay. You know, in the future episodes, because, you know, they can relate like that on that level. Maybe become like a surrogate dad kind of figure. Kind of thing. Right, oh, right. Uh -huh. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, judging from how I see Kyle has played, he doesn't really have that direction. Yeah. So I think Mr. Zimri just might be able to give him that direction that he needs, you know, that development. Like, since he has all this fear and rejection and he feels like that he, that he has to put up a front, you know, I feel like Mr. Zimri is going to be an important key in his life. Like in in the future episodes coming up, like that's that's the way I see it. Like if I were in his position, I would be like, okay, I I want to talk to this guy. Maybe he can help me realize a direction that I don't normally see because I'm so around my friends a lot. But mm. you know, not sorting through myself, sort of deal. So that's what I think. Man, I really love that. That was a really well thought out answer. Thank you. That was um, very insightful and spot on with a lot of things you said, actually. Um, Kyle, what do you think? How do you feel about the Mr. Zimri and Kyle kind of interaction this episode? I believe, personally, that, you know, for Mr. Zimri, Kyle sort of could be like this surrogate son because he's kind of, you know, he's estranged from his family. So, he, you know, he's feeling a bit lost and he's trying to find some sort of connection. And I feel that also with Kyle being lost as well mm -hmm. in, not in a completely similar way but in just a little similar way where they can relate a little that he feels like you know he can lead Kyle to a right point in his life and kind of right his own wrong through Kyle because mm -hmm. um, he notices that you know Kyle's hanging out with not necessarily a, a good crowd yeah so, you know he doesn't yeah. want him to make the same mistakes that he did, you know, obviously Mrs. Emery, you know, he, he gambled and, you know, that's how he lost his family. But, you know, in a way, Kyle's gambling with his future by hanging around with, you know, a lot of D-bags. And, you know, yeah. Kyle's got a lot of potential. So maybe he just wants to lead, just lead him into this light rather than letting him slowly dip into the darkness, which he knows all too well. Man, these answers tonight, holy crap. The, the, yeah, like, absolutely perfect. Like, I, I love both of your insight. It, it sounds like you really understand your characters, like, so well, which, as a director, that makes me, like, well up a little bit, to be honest. Um, but yeah, like, I, I love that. I mean, I personally, I loved filming the interaction between Mr. Zimri and Kyle and writing. It felt so natural. And yeah, like, I agree. It was almost like, like a father and son bonding moment that was really important for the two of them. Um, you know, I've not actually gone into Kyle's relationship with his dad and his family just yet. Uh, that's going to be explored in episode five, but I think you're right. You know, Mr. Zimri does have this sort of, um, he's like a positive mentor. Like he's been like that to Hannah. He's going to be like that to, Ka uh, you know, Kyle. Um, and it it's going to be a really good thing for Kyle's development for sure. So, um, yeah, it was really, really uh, good answers, guys. Thank you very much for that. I actually had a actually had another theory about this episode. Oh yeah. Uh huh. When I when I when I saw that one cutscene, like it, it actually showed itself just now. 
But when I saw that one cutscene, I was like, wait, that looks like Kyle when he was little. It does, actually. I didn't even notice yeah. that. The truth has been revealed. Uh -oh. I am your father. I was like, I wait was a minute. Son. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun. Oh Join me, and together we can rule the school as father and son. <laughs> <laughs> Either it's that all or love, baby. It's either, like... it's either that or it's Looper again, and uh, and Kyle is in fact <laughs> hit version of Zimri. If we're not careful, oh, son. Oh, like a time traveler. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Shit. Zimri. Zimri. Whoa. So Zimri's gone back in time to change his past so he doesn't become a you know oh, gambling loser. Shit. We've been ratted out, boys. <laughs> <laughs> With the time traveler's oh. husband. I mean, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Wife, the time traveler's teacher? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Time traveler's there teacher. Go. There we he go. got there in the end. This summer, school goes back in time. School is cool. <laughs> We're going back to Serendrill. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was meaning to ask, uh, Tia. Yeah? I actually have a question for you, and it's, it's going to be one that I ask a lot of the time with you because I really enjoyed the storyline for it. Okay, yeah. Where are the shadow people at? Oh, I knew you were gonna go into this now. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I really enjoyed that story. Oh, oh is this going back for, to old Saren? Yeah, this is old Saren. Uh, God. Mm -hmm. That, that, okay. Uh, I, don't know I know it's old. Begin. I know it's old, but if you guys do decide to stick around and you want to keep carry on being your characters, there is going to be a season two, which is going to be a remaster of the mm -hmm. old series. So that's season where we're going to. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! You count me in on that. Oh, uh, you can count me in too. You know I've been invested. Yeah. Yep. So them shadow people, they're coming right back. I still remember all the WhatsApp messages you sending me about what might have happened in the episode that didn't come to be. I was like. Hmm. Yeah, because yeah, coincidentally, Vince too. turns bad in that series as well, or he was going to turn mm -hmm. bad. So that's kind of what gave me the inspiration to turn him bad for this see, uh, kind of yeah. series. Yeah, so the seed for Vince to be an arsehole was always there. It was always planted. It was, I was just waiting for it, it to grow. It his destiny. <laughs> for failure. His destiny. dad was an arsehole, then he becomes an arsehole, and then he's an arsehole in this one. So... It well, seems about chronically right. Speaking of Vince's dad, we did actually see him in this episode, if anybody did clock that, but you would have to be like mm -hmm. an old watcher of the old stuff to, to realize. And but... he did point out in that yeah. stream you did as well. <laughs> yeah, he was on the uh, billboard at the very start of the episode, so yeah, he's he's a interesting character, that's for sure. But yeah, in question in, in answer to your question, Curry, the shadow people will return for season two. Everybody's getting get out. Well, Everybody. I'm invested. Oh. I'm invested. Yeah. I'm all about it. Hell yeah. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not. I've been there since the beginning. I'm not getting it. <laughs> I'm, I'm invested. I love that. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Like, I, I love working with all of you so much. So it means a lot that you, lo you like the show and you like your characters <laughs> too. So I, I love that. Thank you. Oh, we're villagers. Oh we're my villagers. god. I went so anime on, on my <laughs> villager. You did? Oh, so anime. <laughs> oh, we have, uh, we have two questions in the chat. Oh, um... Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Rose... If we're open at the chat, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got some open questions for all of you, but I'll take some chat questions now. So we've got um, Rose Panda. For, it looks like this is for everyone. Uh, what is everyone's personal favorite character in the series so far? Um, oh, Kyle, because I he's he's a passionate boy, man. Mm -hmm. Like behind the scenes and everything, when he's not like acting up with his friends, like he's actually really passionate, and a lot of Kyle's aspects on life is something i can get behind i can relate to because yeah i am somewhat going through a bit of trying to understand myself too oh so you can relate so, yeah so really like 
Kyle to me is like perfect. Like, because I'm going through so many things at the moment and mm. I'm trying to understand who I truly am as a person. And, and Kyle is trying to do that for himself as well. Mm. You know, uh, but unfortunately, I don't hang around the wrong crowd. Uh, so I don't got that going for me. <laughs> but. Well, you're hanging around with us. Yeah, I was gonna say. Like... <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it it's actually really cool. Like Kyle for me is Kyle is my favorite. One of my favorites is the character that I play. Again, the same reason as sort of what Curry gave was that you know I quite relate to Mr. Zimri in a lot of ways. You know, minus you know losing my family and gambling mm -hmm. because you know I don't have a family in that regard like i have a family but i don't have a family um yes, yeah. yeah yeah so like i can relate in that sense you know feeling a bit lost um and directionless and you know just trying to get back on track especially like the last couple of months uh it's been a bit rough but you know i'm getting back in the swing of things you know and i think that's what mr zemry's trying to do you know he's just trying to find his feet you know get back in the swing of things um i can relate to hannah a little bit as well you know her story her arc is really interesting mm -hmm. and her trying to find her feet as well and i think also as well as there being a little connection between kyle and mr zimri there's also the little spark between mr zimri and hannah as well mm -hmm. he can see, he, i think he can see sort of that you know she's she's not losing it but you know she's lost and i think you know He's just going to try and help her get back on track a little bit. So they're mm. my two kind of favorite characters. No one ever says Hannah because she's like the main character. So like that makes me like giddy. Oh, for my character, I would say probably the one I like the best is the demon guy. The uh, oh. the one that appears in people's heads. Just because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. being someone who has had those kind of thoughts, it definitely I do relate to what is being said. Mm. Yeah. having that kind of experience myself it's just like yeah that 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 hits home quite badly that does it, it, yeah it yeah. got a little too real didn't it it'll just get worse as well i'm sorry to say <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta make me feel these feelings with the way i finished um episode four yeah it's 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 not getting any better guys sorry <laughs> That's a big oof in the chat there, guys. Yeah. But that's interesting. I, I wouldn't have thought that he would have been a favourite, but that's that's interesting. It, it's just because of how I relate to it. I was just yeah. like, okay, I kind of get this character, and I was like, I get the form. What shows inspired the invisible story? Interesting. Okay, so um, it's got a couple of inspirations, actually. So Life is Strange is a big one. Um, It's... So, like, the design of Hannah is, um, you know, inspired from, like, Max from Life is Strange. As is Sky, she's kind of in, uh, inspired her design from Chloe. Um, so we've got we've got a couple of things here, um, but I would say it's very much like um, To All the Boys I Loved Before, um, Sierra Burgess is a Loser, um, You Got Mail, um... Uh, Breakfast Club. Yeah, I think the top three, Life is Strange, Love, Simon, and Sierra Burgess is a Loser. If you play that game and watch those two films, you'll probably see a lot of inspirations for sure. Are you good, Kyle? Yeah, I'm you're good. Back. You're back? I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. He died and I'm oh, no. back. Oh. I came back for my son. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason Simba, my son <laughs> Wait Dad, you're back? That's right, son It's been too long But Daddy's home now oh. well, well, I was just gonna let you know, Dad uh, You left cold pizza in the fridge It couldn't be There's also some chicken there Could I claim the chicken? Is it a two-piece and a biscuit? Because I kinda had dips on that <laughs> And also, is there gravy? You can't have chicken without gravy. Oh, KFC gravy. Oh. Right, what was, what what was your the character the again, Magnata? What was your character's name? Vince. 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 <laughs> Wait, hang on, Vince. How did you find me and my dad's home? 
I hacked into your phone. Oh, you looked at my phone? And it's I saw okay, all Tom. those dick pics on there. <laughs> it's okay, Kyle. I have to say, not impressed. <laughs> What do you mean it's okay, Dad? He looked through my phone and saw all the dick pics. It's okay, Kyle, because he's really your half brother. <laughs> what? Daddy, no! Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Vince? No, no what? Start talking, good at man! Basketball. What's, go <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? I don't know. I'm not you, man. Dude! <laughs> Dude, no, we're not about that right now. You gotta start talking. What? What happened? I don't Let's know. We just say... told us we're brothers. Let's just say Vince's mom's got a little ass. <laughs> and that's <laughs> my ass. Hang on one second. With no appropriate reason to do so, no, what the I'm gonna call Tia right really off. quick. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna call Tia really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Steps into the room by himself. <clears throat> Sits on bed. Come on, pick up Tia. Pick up. Kyle, what the? Why, why, why are you calling me? We've never spoke before. Look. How do you get this I got number? Your num Look, I got your number through another number, which had a number, which then had the other number, which was your number. You got off the demon, didn't you? <laughs> oh my. Shit. You see him too? How did you... <laughs> yeah, I see him all the... <laughs> I see him all the time, yeah. Oh, shit. All the time. Look, Tia, I gotta ask you a question. A, a very important one. Okay. Apparently Vince is my half-brother. Wait, what? Yeah, Nani? I didn't know neither. Nani Deska? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Nani? Nani? Yeah, it's... it's, Nani. it's... I'm, I'm sorry, the connection, it's just... It's really bad right now. Hang on a second, I'll tell Dad to get off the Wi-Fi. One minute. <laughs> covers covers mouthpiece on the phone. Zimri, stop gambling! Alright, Dad! <laughs> what? Get off that gambling website, I know you're on it! <laughs> I'm looking at titties. Leave me alone. <laughs> I am too, Dad. <laughs> Let's look at titties together, son. It can be a <laughs> I got you, Dad. I don't know how to process all of this. I'm, I'm going through things right now, you see. Mm -hmm. and, and then now come to find out that Mr. Zimri is my dad. And then also come to find out that Vince is my brother, half-brother. This is a lot to process, Kyle. I mean, I don't know what to say right now. You'd think the director would have thought of this. <laughs> this director is one badass motherfucker. <laughs> Damn. They know what they're doing. Kyle, I think I saw a video of you, like, dancing or something? Like, I think Hannah had something on her phone? I swear I clicked... I clicked <laughs> off the... How are you still... Oh, with the video? Okay, look, we can talk, all right? <laughs> I can talk. <laughs> oh man, okay, this is bad. Alright. Listen. Remember, I hacked your phone, you fucking moron. Uh, sh no, besides the dick pics, now my fucking. Alright, look, to you. Oh, yeah, I, I got some Ferris dick pics if you want her. And Vince, too, actually. He's Tia, oh, hell yeah, yeah, everybody's got those. Tia, how in the. F I don't want to see my half brother's penis. <laughs> and Wait, Vince is <laughs> your half brother? Apparently. Wow. So are you popping a lock in for other people? <laughs> Be quiet, Dad! I'm talking to you! Wait, is that Mr. Zimri? Uh, yeah, we're... We're living together. Oh. Oh my. Yeah, uh, well, no, it's not like that. It's... <laughs> I found Wait, my long-lost father, you know? He, you know he lives in his truck, right? Well, it's pretty cramped in here. <laughs> What do you expect? It's a Volkswagen. <laughs> Dad, you need to get big and call it a fucking Beetle. Vince is just in the back with the boxes. 
All right, look, um, this truck is really nice, but uh, Tia, listen, I'll do anything to remove the video, okay? Look, you got to get me out of here, all right? The director, mm. he's only, I don't know who they are, but they're doing this because, you know, I'm the bully of the series. Obviously, if I go through a character development, the fans will eat it up. Mm, they now, do love a redemption I, arc, they do. Yeah, but but listen, all right? Look, I'm not about it. I'm a, I can't I can't just let my real self out there, okay? So what are you gonna do? I'm going to walk up to them and then I'm going to be like, all right, listen here, director. All right, now now tell me if this is convincing enough to you, all right? Now listen here, director. You're gonna remove that video. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're gonna remove it. Then you're gonna you're not going to tell anyone that I'm a dancer. Okay, practicing still. I don't want my dad to find out. All right. Dad hasn't seen me dance yet. Son. Uh, uh, hang on one second. Yes, dad. Are you going for a redemption arc? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Better not. It doesn't end well. <laughs> don't worry, dad. I won't. Right, look, see, he's already, he's, he's creeping. He's on to you. He's on to you, Kyle. I know. Look, the moment we get, we get past this, okay, I'll be able to tell the director, stop putting me through things. All right. I have to focus on my relationship with my dad and Vince. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. Vince is right there. Vince! What? Have all you the seen the video? in this fucking vehicle. <laughs> Have you seen the vehicle? Uh, the video? The vehicle? The video? The, I've seen the video. You got some moves it. there. Yeah, I feel like we've all seen the video. Oh, Boy? <laughs> yes, Dad? Are you going through brotherly <laughs> bonding time? Um, Chicken. Right, Somebody works. say two piece. <laughs> yes, yes, two piece. It's in the fridge. We Let's go, go to Papa's, Papa's dad. Wait, how did? Wait, Dad, I got a question. Yes. How the fuck do you have a two piece chicken <laughs> in the fridge <laughs> with a truck? I make it work for me. <laughs> the truck serves me. <laughs> I don't serve the truck. Kyle, it's inside his fucking glove box. That's all cooled in there. God damn it. I thought that's where you kept your drugs. You don't want to know where I keep my drugs. All right, I, I, have, tea, I have tea on loudspeaker. <laughs> she said it's that. Is, is that box? Hey, he's in daddy's glove box. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Uh oh, that's, that's Mr. Zimri's coming on to Tia now. Um. <laughs> Mr. Zimri, no! <laughs> Wait, Dad, she's my. She's like. Okay, she's not my classmate. I mean, we've never actually talked in school, so this is kind of uncomfortable for me. I'm not gonna lie. Listen, you don't <laughs> ask what's in the glove box. <laughs> 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 Oh. You better respect my secret time. Oh, oh whoop your ass. Yes, I'm, Dad. We, I'm, not, I'm not gonna open I'm not gonna <laughs> open the door fire. <laughs> your accent just changed again. That's right. You messing with after school, Mr. Zimri. <laughs> oh detention, Zimri. Oh, damn. oh shit. That's right. <laughs> I'm out of my slacks. And into my sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to wear pants when I'm not in the school. <sighs> oh, big. No. Even my shorts. shorts. It sounds Dad, like you, know you guys are having some family time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang up now. Oh no, little girl, you know too much. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> uh, Dad, did you go up in the south or something? Now, what are we going to do about this two-piece and the biscuit? Because that is 
you can have it. You can have it. And scene. <laughs> Because I've done it up there. Oh my god! The best oh redemption god. arc you'll hear on Twitch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was a redemption. Just, arc. It, literally, this <sighs> podcast is going to be just called Two Peas and a Biscuit. Oh fuck! Don't tempt me. <laughs> Two Peas and a Biscuit. Oh my god, dude. Oh shit. Oh god. I'm crying. I was. <laughs> this would actually be a good idea for some improv streams. This is actually a really good idea. Yeah, definitely. I'm Ooh. telling you, I'm so down. <laughs> Charlie, you're good. The stakes changed every five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I just love that how it just kind of went southern and it's like, what the fuck? The accent changed so much. <laughs> After school, Zimri. <laughs> You're dealing with after school, Zimri, now. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go we back to play. the bayou. We don't play that Tyler mess. Tyler Wattis. Tyler Wattis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. As we all said before this stream, before this stream, it's gonna go to chaos. We literally did. We were like, it's gonna be so structured at the start, you know. I've got my nice script that I'm reading from, and then it's just gonna all just break into hell, which it did. I called it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Schedule, oh. schedule chaos. I don't get many things right, but I got this right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You got is this right, right with the chaos. We've got. Two more questions. Do you guys feel like you want to answer them or? Sure, do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Okay. Yeah, it. yeah. All right. Uh, so the next question is: So Kyle, we're doing like everyone questions now. So if you've got an answer, just speak up. If you don't, that's cool too. Um, so it, for this question, we took a little bit of an unusual sidestep into a different world this episode, and it showed us Amelia's backstory, but in a fantasy medieval setting. So given what was shown, what do you think happened to Amelia's family and her sister in the real world? We saw a lot of fire, so I'm guessing something might have happened, you know, the house burning down, or they was in a car accident where it went up in flames. Ah. I'm guessing something to do with fire, possibly. Yeah, very nicely noted, yeah. Oh, uh, noticed, yeah. yeah. I believe, I, th I think it's something to do with her sister's mental health, for sure. I think she's, like, in an institution. Ah, okay. Something, mm -hmm. something of that effect. I think possibly she could have, you know, maybe burnt the house down because oh. of mental inflictions and that's how they lost the parents i'm not sure i've got a feeling there's something to do with fire and there was with a the fire. sister not being there there's something yeah. connected to yeah there was like a lot of fire so fire might symbolize something darker that will happen in the future oh yeah, it's kind of abstract, it's isn't it? Because it was told in a story, so it's not exactly what happened, obviously, because it's not fantasy, but, like, if we translate that into a real-life setting, there's a lot of similarities there, so... There's been yeah. some good guesses so far, for sure. I really enjoyed that scene. It was really refreshing for me to film, actually, because I'm, you know, I'm either you know, filming in a street or I'm filming in the school. So it was a nice breakaway mm -hmm. for me, actually. I, I, I think out of every scene that I filmed, that was like my favorite for sure. Yeah, and that's why I feel like uh, that particular scene, you kind of got to think outside the box a little bit. Like mm. uh, from from what you see with that scene in general, oh, I just feel something like grim is just going to happen in the further episodes for that. Yeah. Like, there's mm -hmm. going to be some butterfly effects that take place that ends up leading to that grim tragedy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking it could be a foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah, for foreshadowing. That's yeah. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. Foreshadowing of what's to come. Mm hmm. Ooh. Oh. Fire. There's lots of destruction and Fire. chaos. So that's, so that's what I'm going to stick with. I think there's more of that. 
than meets the eye. And that's what I'm going to stick with. Okay, so next question is, even though this is a, teen a teenage drama slash romance series, do you think that it is important that we're tackling these heavier topics such as drug addiction, gambling, mental illness? Or do you think that it's a bit too much for the type of show that it is? No, no I because... More, I think it's more than Not appropriate. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mate. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's completely appropriate because mm -hmm. things like drug addiction is not never limited to sort of just adults. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it 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 adds authenticity by having sort of like teenagers with with drug problems mm -hmm. because it's it's real it's a real thing. So no, I don't, I don't think it's uh... the same thing with mental health issues. It affects everybody. Yeah. And so making sure people yeah. in their teenage years know that people during their teen years go through the same thing as adults it kind of helps them go okay maybe it's not just me and they can seek out help rather than just go oh my brain's just fucked mm. i'm you know. going to bounce off detective mag and uh rich on this one i think also that the fact that you include these elements as to say hey these things are there. They happen. Hmm. Tia, I think your show brings awareness to the fact that these things can and will happen to anyone and everyone mm -hmm. who is affected greatly. Hmm. So, yeah, I I agree with I agree with uh, Rich and Detective Magnata because I have the same view on that. I don't think it's too much. I think people need to be aware that these things are a thing. You know. Mm -hmm. refresh people's minds a bit yeah, especially definitely. for the yeah for the type of crowd that you're you're trying to hit like people need to know like you shouldn't ignore these issues mm -hmm. they're they're there and yeah. they need to be seen yeah yeah like for and it i guess it it stops it from being stigmatized so much and it normalizes it and mm -hmm. you know we're we're in a period of time where you know more people are suffering with you know these kind of problems. You know, mental health has been on the rise for years and years and years. And obviously, you know, we're all coming out of a global pandemic, so uh -huh. people yep. who didn't suffer before are now going to be suffering after. So you know, and for a lot of people, that's scary to deal with because they've never had to struggle with their own thoughts before. I mean, if you're like mm -hmm. me and you've always had these issues, you know, it's just kind of another day at, day at the races. Mm. But for a lot of people, you know, they're kind of new to this rodeo. They haven't ridden this horse before. So it's kind of, you know, just trying to get a hold of the reins and, you know, ride it out. So I think things like this show where, you know, generally it's quite pleasant, but it does have these darker undertones. is nice because actually it just symbolizes what life is. It is a lot of of, you know, darkness Up with these down. commercial breaks of happiness or vice versa. So, mm. you know, I think it's completely 100% apt. I agree. Um, and also, uh, another thing I like to add, if you didn't add these elements to the series, then I feel that it, it would just be a normal show. Like, it wouldn't really show a lot of like of the emotion that deserves to be seen with those elements on. Mm -hmm. So truth be told, I think you're doing a good job. Um, the direction that you have and the imagination that you put on the screen and making people aware of what situations happens in real life, you know, in a school environment, especially is definitely hitting a lot of people like i know it especially hits me because when i see this series i think back on my high school days how hard i had it mm. and this it definitely hits home with a lot of elements that i've seen and experienced myself from when i used to be in high school like 16 years ago it's interesting for me because there's a lot of my own personal experiences in there. There's a lot of my friends' experiences in there too. 
Um, mm. And, you know, I felt it was important to add in, in, especially the high school setting, because personally for me, the stuff that I experienced in high school, I carry that all the way through adulthood, and it's not something that I forget. And it is a part of me, but I don't let it define me <laughs> as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's a bit difficult sometimes portraying those topics in media because you want to be very sensitive about it so for example you know the the mental health stuff like the depression arc with Tia you want to be showing the the bad side but also the good side that you can get help and you can go to therapy um Mm -hmm. so it's not just all doom and gloom like that there is stuff that you can be doing and it's good to be proactive it's good to be talking about it um so yeah, I, I, I'm i glad that you guys feel the same about that because it's a really, really important part of the show, if not one of the most important parts of um, the whole story, to, personally to me. Um, so I'm glad that you guys are on board with that as well. All right. Um, and then a little bit of a lighter one just to end it off here. Um, so this is the final question. So again, if anybody has an answer, just speak up. Uh, so I want to know um, how are you feeling about the character that you play at the moment? Um, is there any parts of them that you like or uh, dislike? I don't think I want anything to change about my character. I feel like he's on this, he's in this character development right now where it's either going to be a good thing or a bad thing for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, to come to grips to everything we'll see in the future but I'm excited for the ride yeah I'm pretty alright with my character I'm happy to play my first villain pretty much mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's nice to explore that kind of role that I don't think I've really ever explored before so it's me trying to figure out what would a person say that you know isn't me mm. who is you know soft as a powder puff and twice as gentle kind of thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's just been really interesting just to see you on Vince because your writing and my kind of improv are kind of generating all this hate and I was like that's a good job everybody's (laughs) hating the fucking asshole we love to hate (laughs) yeah with each episode a little bit more of the puzzle is put into frame and I like how you slowly but surely like unravel it his past uh, and how it you know connects to his present situation mm. um the implications it have for his future uh and in regards to you know the possibility of you know being back in contact with his family uh, or maybe not being back in contact with his family you know again it's like riding the rise you know it, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out and mm. the, in the context of you know where he is in his life. Yeah, I think, um, oh, sending love to all the cast members. You guys are really talented. Yes, they are very talented. And Tia too, you're an amazing director and I love you so much. I'm, I'm so glad that you guys, well, not only the voice actors, but also you guys also enjoy the show and that you enjoy these guys' voices as well because um, some of these guys do aspire to be voice actors but some just do it for fun and the fact that they give me that energy and time and dedication is just absolutely amazing and uh they all mean the world to me so yeah thank you very much for coming out to the podcast tonight it's been an absolute pleasure of course we'll you know do another one of these after the next episode hopefully these guys will join uh you know and again we'll have a lot of fun again um but for now thank you very much for coming out and we'll see you on the next one Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. bye. No, I'll come back bye. now. <laughs> bye everyone. Two pieces and a biscuit. <laughs> two pieces and a biscuit. God damn. <laughs>